Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, could your home also be your pension? Now, the temptation is clear. The average house in 1971, according to the Nationwide, cost around £6,000. The same house now, after property price increases, would cost you more like £206,000. So if you bought anywhere before now and kept the property, you've probably done quite nicely. On top of that, you might be thinking, I've got lots of equity stored up in my property, and I'll give you a stat on this in a moment, because if you borrow to buy a property, you get the benefit of gearing and a multiplier on the equity you own. So for example, if you bought a property that cost 200,000 pounds, took out a 50% mortgage, the price goes up 50%, and that's easily possible over the one of the periods I just showed you on the graph, the return on your equity is double that, thanks to gearing. So, no wonder people are thinking, well, when I come to paying for my retirement, I'm not going to trust the state necessarily. It's not enough money, and who knows, the rules could change. Defined benefit pensions, those lovely final salary pensions, for example, are on the way out. Annuity rates are quite low in terms of trading a lump sum of cash for an income, so maybe I'll use my house. So let's take a look at that. Now, one way you could use your house is to trade down. So let's take a look at this. Legal and General reckon that the untapped property wealth in the UK amongst over 55s is a mighty 820 billion pounds, thanks to price rises, thanks to that gearing effect I just mentioned. And a lot of people would say, well, if I move to a cheaper area, I can sell a house where I am, buy something cheaper and move into it. On top of that, if I move into something smaller, that's gonna work in my favor too. And my main residence is free from capital gains tax. So when I sell it, any gain I've stored up is tax-free, and that's true. So lots of reasons why you might be thinking, this is a great idea, downsize, release some money for a pension. But, first of all, you may not want to do it. People get emotionally attached to their family home. It's not as easy as it sounds to just dump it when you need the cash. Secondly, some retirees will find actually the amount of money they free up isn't as much as they think. They might want to move back into a more expensive area, into the middle of town to get better facilities, for example, and or they might need a special type of property, say a bungalow, and those are in short supply. Finding suitable properties is therefore tough. Legal in general reckon that only 2% of our current housing stock suits the needs of older people. So, the result, only 15% of the over 55s are actually selling to release up money for their pensions, according to retirement house builder McCarthy and Stone. On top of that, people are not moving far, so they're probably not releasing that much equity, four miles on average, and the amount being freed up is 59,000 pounds. If you're thinking that's a lot, that's about one year in a typical care home these days, privately run, or about four years of pension at the government's recommended minimum of 15,000 pounds. So maybe downsizing isn't as clever as it looks. So what's an alternative? Gonna look at two schemes that are being touted heavily at the moment, both called equity release. One's the home reversion scheme, one's the lifetime mortgage. Here's the idea. This time you stay in your current house and unlock money from it. Now be careful. So home reversion, how's it work? What are the drawbacks, if you like? So usually only available to those age 60 or more. For starters, the lender offers you a lump sum all right, in return for a fixed stake in your property. And the loan is repaid after the eventual proceeds when the property is sold. So far, so good. But the problem is, these deals can be bad news. The 70-20 is where a lender wants 70% of the eventual sales value of your home in return for just giving you a 20% chunk of it now. That's not a good deal. The value of the property, for the purposes of establishing the loan, may be below open market value, so the deal's skewed in the lender's favour again. Watch out for the fact that this can limit your ability to pay for long-term care later, restrict your access to benefits, and arrangement fees can be hefty. So be very careful. Read the small print. It's not quite as good as it looks in a lot of cases. So what's the alternative? Well, there is a thing called a lifetime mortgage. This one, you need to be 55 or over, usually. This is where a lender offers you a mortgage secured on your home. There are lots of different styles. Lump sum is a lump of cash now. Drawdown is where you pull cash out drip it out, and then there's an option where, rather than rolling up all the interest and paying it from the sales proceeds from the property, if you like, you defer all that under some of these arrangements, other ones allow you to repay interest as you go, with a no negative equity guarantee. So there are lots of different styles, but the principle is take out a loan, don't worry about repaying it until later. Now, be careful here. First of all, there are restrictions on the maximum loan to value anyway, the amount of money that can be lent. 
Secondly, the interest rates are normally higher than the standard mortgage, more on that in a moment. Early repayment penalties may apply, portability of loans can vary, arrangement fees can be a bit juicy, and it may impact your ability to draw other benefits. So lots of things to think about before you sign on the dotted line. Now that interest cost point, imagine you are pulling out £95,000 at 6.79%, a fairly typical rate, and you're not paying a bean of it back. That could roll up to £131,000 after five years. So suddenly, when you come to repay, you owe £131,000 or 183 after 10. That's a lot more than you borrowed in the first place, as you can clearly see. And that's the danger with rolling up interest and repayments. Alternatives then. So if downsizing and equity release are not brilliant, what else can you do? Well, do review your other investments and make sure they're organised to generate the most income as possible. Think about renting out a room in your current property up to the tax-free limit. That works for some people. Make sure you're getting full state benefits. And there's a list of some of the ones that you might claim and not realise you can. Check the availability of help with improvements or adaptations from, for example, the council. And finally, do involve the rest of the family in the decision. Don't get a snake oil salesman in front of you who gets you to sign home reversion schemes without talking to somebody else first. Lots of ground covered there. Any questions, editor at killick.com and at killickexplains.com. Lots of relevant related videos.